Welcome to our six-minute tutorial on modular CMTS. If you're not familiar with cable modem termination systems, we strongly encourage you to stop this tutorial here and first view our basic CMTS tutorial. In today's modern cable systems, we define the downstream direction as the data path from a cable head end towards the subscriber and the upstream direction from the subscriber back to the cable head end. For most internet applications today, Large amounts of downstream bandwidth are required, while fairly modest upstream demands are made on the network. For example, if a user is doing a search, a small stream of data requesting information can be sent to Google in the upstream direction, and Google typically responds with a large downstream data dump onto your desktop. Today's legacy cable networks are well suited to handle these types of applications that require large amounts of downloading bandwidth, but very little in the upstream direction. Even services like voice, which are symmetric, have very low bandwidth requirements and thus do not pose significant challenges to the MSO's branch and tree hybrid fiber coax architectures that are out there today. More recently, however, new applications on the web have begun to arise that make significantly more demands on the upstream bandwidth of a network. These applications can become a problem for the MSO as their legacy networks have limited upstream bandwidth. Among these applications, we view BitTorrent as being the single most important and biggest user of bandwidth in the upstream direction. BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network that is often used by subscribers to download and upload very large files from the internet. For more information on BitTorrent, please view our tutorial with that background information out of the way, let's move on to our discussion of the modular CMTS. First, let's review what the older generation or integrated CMTS looks like. CMTS can be thought of as three parts, a router, a filter, and a high frequency radio front end. Typically, a processing unit provides processing functionality for all three of these. The yellow box here suggests that all this functionality is typically encapsulated into a single box. Information from the subscriber's cable modem arrives at the CMTS where it is demodulated by the radio frequency front end. Information is then passed on to a filter, which typically chokes bandwidth if too much is demanded from a consumer. And then information is passed on to a router, which then forwards the information on to various parts of the web. Unlike a traditional CMTS, in a modular CMTS architecture, the various parts of functionality, the radio front end, the router, the traffic shaper, and even the timing and sync signals typically reside on separate shelves. The advantage of such an approach is that CMTSs can then be configured with various ratios of RF front end to routing. For example, if the cable MSO wants to support an application that requires huge amounts of RF capability, but relatively little in the way of routing resources, a configuration such as the one shown can be configured. In comparison, if another application instead becomes popular, which requires large amounts of routing resources and relatively little in the way of radio frequency front ends, this configuration can be used instead. Thus, unlike an integrated or traditional CMTS, where the ratio of radio frequency capabilities to traffic shaping to routing is all fixed in a single box, in a modular CMTS architecture, different amounts of each of this functionality can be purchased separately and configured in a single CMTS. The modular CMTS architecture definition in the new DOCSIS 3.0 standard also allows for dynamic frequency allocation and channel bonding. These are two techniques that a CMTS can use to provide large amounts of bandwidth both in the upstream and downstream direction for brief periods as the need arises. In a dynamic frequency allocation scheme, Frequencies are assigned as needed from the radio front end and are not fixed for each subscriber. Likewise, channel bonding, or the addition of multiple frequencies together to form a large pipe, is used to provide large amounts of bandwidth for brief periods. It is important to recognize, however, that these dynamic frequency allocation and channel bonding techniques are much more adept at providing bandwidth for bursty applications. This is because they inherently take bandwidth from one consumer and give it to another for a brief period. 
As such, they are not as useful for applications like BitTorrent that make more constant bandwidth demands on the network. Consider, for example, the two scenarios depicted in this picture. On the left, we see a user that is uploading pictures to Shutterfly. He may make a large demand for upstream bandwidth on the network for a few minutes while these pictures upload, but after those minutes go by, his demand goes back to a much more normal level. In comparison, BitTorrent users often leave their machines on for several hours or days at a time. As such, the demands they make for both upstream and downstream are far more constant and much higher than the scenario shown on the left. Thus, the frequency allocation techniques and the use of a modular CMTS architecture are much more adept at handling scenarios shown on the left than the constant demand scenarios shown on the right. For, that, for the scenario on the right, more bandwidth is simply required. It is for this reason that in addition to the advantages of the modular CMTS architecture we have already described, the new DOCSIS 3.0 standard also reclaims a portion of the spectrum from 42 MHz to 85 MHz, which can be then used for providing more upstream bandwidth in the network. The analog channels that previously resided in this portion of the bandwidth must be moved in order to accommodate this new upstream bandwidth. Here we see the leading modular CMTS vendors listed under each part of the functionality that they provide. We note in particular that the timing reference in a modular CMTS architecture is provided in a separate shelf and currently is provided only by Symmetricom. We expect additional competitors to provide timing resources for modular CMTS in the future. In an integrated CMTS, timing is integral to the shelf and is not provided by a separate functional unit. In a modular CMTS architecture, various pieces of functionality, including the radio front end, the router, the traffic shaper, and the timing resources, are all provided in separate shelves. This allows the cable MSO to vary the ratio of amount of functionality provided by varying the amount of equipment it configured in a CMTS. This concludes our modular CMTS tutorial.